is weird, odd, strange, or just plain bizarre is really your cup of tea. Then, the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast will give you that fix. Can't believe it? Well, listen for yourself as we deliver the strangest news you definitely won't find on CNN or Fox. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast. Welcome to the GSMC Weird News Podcast with your favorite host, Ryan Holloway. Brought to you and presented by the GSMC Podcast Network to provide you for with all of your podcasting needs. So, this episode is going to be about dedication. It's going to be about dedication. And it's going to be about what it takes to be the best at something. You know what? Not even that. I'm not going to go that far. We're not going to say what it takes to be the best. We're just going to say how bad you want something because they say that they say that, you know, you're defined by what you're willing to struggle for and what you're willing to struggle for is what you're defined by. So if you work really, really hard at something, then that's basically what defines you. If you don't work hard at it, then that pretty much doesn't define you. So that's why a lot of our vices that we like that we lose our stuff over. It ends up defining us in the long run negatively and our passions and crafts that are more positive that we dedicate our lives to those struggles define us as well. With that, I tell you this, a recent study says that three out of five people who try a cigarette will smoke cigarettes for the rest of their lives. Three out of five, three out of five. Now, before we go into, I'm not, I'm not even going to go into like how negative smoking is. I'm not going to do all that. I'm not going to sit here and like rain on your smoking day. If you're smoking right now, that's fine. I don't mind you smoking while listening to my show. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a jerk about that. I don't mind at all. What, what perplexes me is the amount of dedication it takes to be a smoker. Like, can you imagine if they said, you know, three out of three out of five people that pick up a basketball are going to go to the NBA. Everyone would be playing ball. Everybody. Because the odds are great. Can you imagine if they said three out of five people that attended college are going to graduate? Because that's not that's not true. That's not. Just so you know, when you watch TV, people are like, yeah, we're going to go to school. Yeah. And people go to school and then they all graduate. That It doesn't work that way. A bunch of people sign up for school, junior college, CSUs, UCs, state colleges, universities, all those. People sign up. But... Mm-mm. If they, if you look at the amount of people that were registered compared to the amount of people that graduated, I think it's like, I don't know, 25 or 30%, but three out of five, you mean 60%, 60, jeez, you know what type of dedication and commitment it takes to be such a good smoker. That's so many years of smoking. And you're telling me those three out of five people, like did those three like it? Nope. Mm-mm. I'm not, I'm going to guess that out of those three out of five, out of those five, I'm going to say one out of five person liked it the first time. One out of five liked it. And that's probably, and that person is maybe one of the three that can do, but the other two out of the three, geez, like what they just kept going for life though. I, I mean, they say cigarettes is cigarettes are addicting, but I feel like with all of this new information that we have out, if three out of five people are just smoking and then immediately becoming like, yo, I'm yo, this, this is what I want to do. I love this. I love this. Now, I feel like at that point, it's, I feel like at that point, it's your own will. It's gotta be your own will. You must just really want to be good at smoking. I don't see, I don't really see any other way. You know, the reason that you will continue doing that three out of five is a large number. And I, I, I applaud, I, I applaud your commitment. I genuinely applaud your commitment because mm-mm, th- that that's a lot. That's a lot of cigarettes. Three out of five people that try a cigarette will smoke one for the rest of their life. That's, I mean, that, that makes you a professional. If you smoke for your whole life, I feel like you were just born with lungs to take in that type of smoke. You're like, you know what? This is nothing for me. This is, this is nothing. I can do this. I can do this. And I want to do this. I'm dedicated to it. So congratulations to them. I want to talk a little bit more about dedication. Um, a mother decided that she had enough of her kid being bullied. And she decided that she was going to take matters into her own hands. 
the kid was getting on the bus and he was being bullied by kids. He was showing up with like, he was showing up with like a, with a bloody lip. So at first I thought that it was just like, you know, regular bullying, like, ha ha, you're stupid. Nah, your mother wears combat boots, all that type of like regular type of bullying, you know, like low key 1990s bullying 2.0, you know, like, Hey, you were going to, we're going to, we're going to take your papers out of your backpack and spit on them. You know, that type of stuff. I don't really, I don't really, I don't really know what type of, I don't know what type of bullying level that would be. Like take somebody's papers out of their backpack and spit on them. But Hey, I mean, you know, like maybe change the game a little bit, but nothing to like actually affect someone physically. But when your kid is showing back up with, you know, black eyes and, and bloody lips, it might be time to take action. It just might be time to take action. So this mother decided what she was going to do. She was going to take a knife to the school and confront the bullies. Yes. The mother was going to take a knife to the school and confront the bullies. She's like, yeah, I've had it. I've had enough of this. I'm not, I'm not going to do this anymore. So she gets in her car and she drives to the school and she runs up on the kids that she thinks are the bullies and says, Hey, you're not, <laughs> you're not going to, going to be assaulting my son. Uh, uh-uh, We're not having that. And the, um, the mom ran up on the 13 year old that she thought was, you know, having the, um, having the issue. And <laughs> the 13 year old assaulted the mother, assaulted her just because the mother became verbally abusive to this 13 year old. The 13 year old was like, I'm not having that. And 13 year old basically, basically just took off on the mom, just fired on her, just uh, punch her in the face. And then the mother pulls the knife out and starts waving it all willy nilly (laughs) saying this isn't going to happen here you guys aren't about this life i got this knife life i'm all for it this is what we're doing today so the uh the police are called and the lady the mother is taken to jail and and she's later released on bail get this get this the kids went to jail too. Like they, the three teenagers, they went to jail as well. But the son of the son who was get the son who was getting bullied got suspended. Now, can you imagine? Like you get beat up right at school, and then your mom says, "We're not having this." And you're like, "No, no, just be cool. Like, don't don't do it. Like, don't no no. We're not having this. Your lips bloody. We're not having this stuff." And your mom goes to school and gets in a fight with thirteen year olds. And then you get suspended. Now you've missed class and you got a suspension on your record. Now, when I first heard this story, I was like, oh, that's, I guess the mom had had enough. I mean, I guess, you know, if I don't, I don't, I didn't really know what to think. I kind of thought, I felt like it could be like maybe a fifth grader getting beat up. Maybe this is like a K through 12 school, right? It's like a fifth grader getting beat up by like 16 year olds or something like that. Or maybe it's a K through 12 school and it's like, a seventh grader getting beat up by like, I don't know, freshmen or whatever, but everyone's 13. So I don't, I don't, I don't see why you as a grown up felt like you had to bring a knife to a middle school fight. Not even, not a knife to a gunfight, but a knife to middle. You bought a knife to a fruit snack fight. Like, what are you doing? Like, I just, I feel like hopefully when she's released that they talk to her and get, find out what else is going on. Because I've, I don't, I don't think, I don't, if you, I feel like when you leave your home and you have a knife on you and you go to middle school and you have a knife on you and you go to a middle school and you have a knife on you and you drive to a middle school, I feel like you're going to pull a knife out. I don't think it's something you have with you in, a, in case of emergency. I think you, you're just about that life with that knife. And again, just more dedication for you guys. That's more dedication. I'm going to go on a quick break. When I get back, I'm going to tell you about how sausages save lives and how sausages can teach you about dedication. Be right back. Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts. Past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. (laughs) 
Welcome back to the GSMC Weird News Podcast with your favorite host, Ryan Holloway, presented on and by the GSMC Podcast Network to fulfill all of your podcasting needs. As told to you guys earlier, in case you're a little late, this episode is about dedication. I just told you about a woman that decided that her son was getting bullied too much, so she took a knife to the middle school. Because she's about that life. I also told you guys that three out of five smokers that try a cigarette will smoke cigarettes for the rest of their lives because they're about that life. Dedication. When you want something, you go for it. I'm not saying you should smoke cigarettes the rest of your life. I'm not saying you should take a, a knife to a middle school, but I'm saying that if you're dedicated, then anything's possible. Similar to this man who got trapped in the freezer. I've always... I'm not going to say I have a fear of that, of being trapped in the freezer, but I will say that I think that I'm kind of scared of that. Like, it's not one of my fears. So I don't ever see that. I don't ever feel like I'd be inside of a freezer. Actually, you know what? I'm lying. Let me tell you this story. When I was working as I was working as like a guest ambassador as a club, that means I was a bouncer. And sometimes we'd have to help with uh, with some of the equipment or whatnot. And we would move this stuff from the downstairs to the upstairs. And then after that, like before the club would open up. So we'd get really like kind of we get kind of hot. So before we started sweating, we would go into the freezer and because we had this massive freeze, we'd go in the freezer to like chill off. And then would like basically like stop us from sweating. There was a button on there where you could push it in case the freezer closed on you. There was a button. You push the button and then you come out the freezer. But I was always concerned like what can happen if something if this button just act just just acts up or acts. I just want to know what happens. What happens if this button just decides it doesn't it doesn't want to cooperate with us. I want to know more about it. I want to know more about the situation. So I have been in the freezer and I have been kind of concerned about what's going on. This gentleman in uh in london he was in the freezer because he was you know doing butcher stuff he was going inside the freezer to get some butcher stuff he went inside the freezer and the window closed the door on him and this is weird because like the window closed the door so apparently he doesn't have like a button where you can just push it and then open the freezer i guess that he doesn't have a button because if the wind closed the door that means the door was being propped open it just sounds like a raggedy situation to me like there's i don't know why the wind is closing your freezer door seems silly to me but he got locked in and he instantly knew that everything was going to be bad like because if you get locked in the freezer because i feel like being cold being cold seems like it's worse than being hot to me because i just think if you're hot I don't know. Just being cold is so uncomfortable. It's just, it, especially if you can't control any of, the, any of the cold, like if you can't grab a blanket or anything like that. So instantly this guy is going hard. Like he has to figure out a way to get out of, out of the freezer. What are you going to do? There's no button. There's nothing to get out of there. But you know what he does? He gets a real MacGyver in the situation. He gets real taken in the situation. He gets a real Liam Neeson like in the situation. He goes and finds a 1.5 kilogram black pudding, which is a form of a blood sausage. And he begins to beat on the door until he escapes. Beats on the door, breaks the door, gets out of the freezer. Now, now, for any of you guys that are ever inside of a freezer in a situation where you may get stuck inside of a freezer, I need you to know a couple things. If you have three pounds worth of sausage in your freezer, then you're good. If you don't, I need you to just curl in a ball and just keep knocking until someone hears you come because until someone hears you knocking, because I don't personally know if you can use that much energy while you're that cold. I don't know how many swings that guy had left in him, but if he got to, you know, the third, fourth, fifth, sixth swing, and it almost ended, it, it would have been a problem. It would have been an issue. So, I mean, I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm glad that this worked out for him. I'm glad that he was able to escape, but that's dedication. That's dedication. He said, black pudding saved my life without a doubt. And sometimes that's what you got to do. It's all about dedication. This episode, people I'm telling you. So I want to, I want to know this. Let me know this. Here's the thing. If you're locked and he, he did try kicking the door, just so you know, you're probably wondering why he didn't try. Why didn't he try kicking the door? I, w I want to know why the door is so raggedy, because at certain certain times we end up in situations that are bad and then we have to get something good from that situation. There's got to be a lesson. There's got to be some type of there's got to be some type of 
intrinsic thought to figure out hmm, how this happened to me. How can I avoid this ever happening to me again? I hope they get this door fixed because if there's no button on your door for you to push it and then open your freezer, and you have to prop it open. The wind can close it. If this happens to you one time, if it happens to you once and this guy was to die, then I'd be very sad and it'd be unfortunate if he'd have any blood sausage to get out of there. Now, if this happens again, if this happens again, like, oh my God, I can't believe the wind closed the door on me again. And you know, he doesn't make it out because there's no, there's no three pound sausage in there. I'm not saying that I won't, I won't be sad for him. I'm just saying that, you know, sometimes like life kind of sets us up for survival of the fittest. And then there's certain situations where we get put into and then we don't escape those situations because life is survival of the fittest. And we just kind of just weed people out that well not we i'm i mean nature nature will just weed you out if you don't belong here i'm just saying like i'm not i'm not saying that i'm cool with nature just like just you know taking people out what i am saying is that you know like if if you keep going in the freezer and you know your door is broken then there's a possibility that i'm not saying you get what you deserve i just mean that if it's worth the risk to you then I don't know if you're weighing your risks correctly. That's all I'm saying. That's it. That's it. That's it. That I mean, because you got to be dedicated to living too, right? You can't just be willy nilly and say, hey, I'm going to go in the freezer because I'm dedicated to sausage. No, you got to get your door fixed. That way the wind can't just kill you. You can't be killed by wind unless you live in like a tornado area or a hurricane area or just somewhere where wind is like a natural disaster. You can't leave your door halfway open, then let the wind just close the door on you and kill you. That is the worst way to die ever. Because how do you tell people that? Like, oh, hey, man, what happened to Ron? You know, he never wanted to get the door fixed. So uh, the wind to close the door and we didn't have any sausage to get out. Man, we told Ron to get the door fixed. Yeah, he just never wanted to do it. He never wanted to shell out the money to get the door fixed. Now Ron's dead. So, hey, this is just a lesson, you guys. This is a lesson. I told you a little bit earlier, you're defined by what you're willing to struggle for. If you're trying to save a couple of dollars by not fixing something in your life, then the consequences, are, the, you're going to have to handle the consequences. Like when you don't want to get your brakes fixed in your car, they're squeaking everywhere and grinding. Hey, man. Hey, hey, get those fixed. Get those. Anything to happen. Get that stuff fixed. When I get back, I'm going to tell you guys a little bit more about dedication. Dedication to art. Dedication to art. You guys are going to love this. I'll be right back. This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA. It's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. Welcome back to the GSMC Weird News Podcast with your favorite host, Ryan Holloway, presented on and by the GSMC Podcast Network for all of your podcasting needs. As promised, I told you guys I was going to tell you a little bit more about dedication because this episode has been dedicated to dedication. Today, Weird News is dedicated to dedication. I told you guys about people that smoke cigarettes out of five of them. Three of them out of that five is going to get addicted forever. And that's dedication. That's dedication. You can't, you, you can't, if three out of five people are, are doing something professionally that they try, it's dedication. Because there's no other endeavor where five people are going to try it, then three are, three are going to come immensely successful. No other, no other part of it. There was also a woman who decided she was tired of her kid getting bullied. So she took a knife to school. She took a knife to a middle school, took a knife to a fruit snack fight. That's what she did. That's what she did. She was arrested and so were some other 13 year olds. Dedication. Dedication. I'll also explain to you guys about the butcher who got locked in the freezer and decided, I'm not going to die like this. They'll never take me alive. So what'd he do? He took a sausage. He took a sausage 
and he broke the door with the sausage. Yes, it was a three pound sausage that was in this freezer. Yes, he was a butcher. So he happened to have a sausage that weighed that much. However, if you're in that situation, I can't promise you that things will work out the same way. In the, for emergency purposes, I suggest you guys keep a heavy sausage in your freezer. If your freezer is that big that you can actually walk inside of it, I mean, congratulations to you. I don't know what you may do in it. Maybe you'll get in there willy nilly and start playing around and get stuck and you'll need a sausage to get out. Dedication, dedication to survival. My next story was going to be about dedication to art. A long, a long, I'm sorry, a Rhode Island rapper whose songs include sell drugs has been sentenced three years for selling drugs this guy stage name montana mills was sentenced to um three years um he's 30 years old he'll be doing three years over the course of several months a undercover police officer um bought 22 grams of fentanyl from him 22 grams and then they seized they went to his house and they seized 44 grams of fentanyl I don't know what fentanyl is, but it sounds like it sounds like it's beastly. It sounds like something that I don't know. It sounds like one of those horse tranquilizer things where people are always like horse tranquilizers. But do we even really know what a horse tranquilizer is? We just say it a lot. But I feel like if you have like a Y or if it's something that's not like directly drugs, it's a narcotic and it treats severe pain. Basically, it's a controlled substance. People aren't supposed to be selling it, whatever. Here's the thing. You know why he was selling this? Because he's dedicated to his art. His song is called Sell Drugs. Sell Drugs is the song. And he's going to jail just for that. For selling drugs. He's going to do three years in federal prison for the art. Are you that dedicated to your art? Are you just willy nilly running around making up songs that you don't really live that life about? Like living the fast life. Are you really a sprinter? Are you getting in cars driving really fast? His name is Sell Drugs. So... He's selling drugs. Turns out fentanyl is actually more deadly, more deadly than heroin. And so if your name is sell drugs, here's the thing. I, I would never tell anyone how to how to how to succeed in their art. Wouldn't do that. Your art is your art. My art is my art. I'm I'm open to any feedback. I don't necessarily think someone named sell drugs would be very open to feedback. But you know what? I'm going to take a stab at this. Sell drugs. If. If if your name is sell drugs and it's not it's not sell fentanyl, it's just sell drugs. I believe that you could have probably got away with selling something that wasn't really that wasn't. Mm, let's say the word. What's the word? Dangerous or maybe something that wasn't that wouldn't get you three years in prison. Maybe maybe because you know what? Apparently, he got a good deal because the prosecutors and like his defense were like the dearest. The deal is the deal is fair because originally they asked for six years. I'm like, geez, like six years for that. So that's that's kind of I feel like he got a good deal for it. And I mean, that's OK. And maybe he'll do some more research while he's in jail. That's fine. I just feel like if your name is sell drugs, you don't you wouldn't have you don't got to do that, bro. Like you don't have to you don't have to. You don't have to sell the most deadliest drugs. Like we get it. Your name is sell drugs. You rap about drugs. We get it. I just don't think that's necessary for you to like go ahead and and sell something that's going to get you that much time. Maybe in the future, just like sell some like aspirin or maybe like some weed that's legal in places, right? Just I don't know, just something that's not going to get you three years in prison. I understand dedication to art, and I would never tell anyone to not be dedicated to their art. Me personally, I just feel like that's a little that's. I'm going to go out on the limb, you guys, and I'm going to say that that's that's just a little too much, too much dedication, too much. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I know this episode's about dedication and you can never have too much of a good thing, they say. But I believe everything is good in moderation. And that's a little too much dedication to your craft. You don't have to sell. You don't have to sell those drugs. Sell something else. No need for that. This is a perfect segue into our best history for those of you that are new to my show i like to go ahead and give you the best history it's usually something that happened a while ago and i call it the best history because it's the best like who i don't want to call it old or like what's the word or like ancient or strange i don't want to call it strange or i don't want to do that which is going to be best history i shouldn't be telling i shouldn't be telling our friend our friend sell drugs this because he may be kind of upset but if he was maybe born a little bit earlier maybe a hundred years ago uh, heroin was once a perfectly acceptable medicine 
prescribed by doctors for everything, including coughs and headaches. So you'd go to the doctor and they'd say, hey, um, here, just take this. You'll be fine, which is weird, right? Because I, I feel like this is strange because I feel like people like med school is 12 years of collectively you go to school for a long time. Then you're a doctor. But I wonder if going I wonder if being a doctor was that was that difficult back then. If you're just handing out heroin, then you're fixing everything. So. I feel like they should, be, I, there's no way, there's no way people are going to school for 12 years as doctors back in the day. And they're like, all right, you graduate now. All right, cool. Now I'm a doctor. Now what? If anyone comes in, give them this heroin. Uh, okay. But what about, what about a broken leg? Heroin, a headache, heroin. Um, hmm. Oh, okay. Ear infection, heroin, cough, heroin. Hmm. Oh, uh, okay. All right. You got it. Cool. You're a doctor now. You did it, yo. So I, I hope that back in the day they weren't they weren't making people go to school that long. But if they were if they weren't, then like that's cool too. But now I feel like we're probably being out hustled in this generation because you gotta go to school for twelve years, right? Then you had then you have to go smooth and make friends with some with some prescription company to get the correct pills. When back in the day, all you did was go down the street, get your little doctor certificate, and then they say, "All right, bro, you're good. You're a doctor now. Handle this heroin." So I'm not sure if I want to travel back in time um, to 100 years to go like be able to prescribe heroin if I was a doctor just because of, like other civil things going on. So I'm not 100 percent sure if like my shade is something that would be that would be the most favored 100 years ago. But hey, I mean, for this guy, Mr. Sell Drugs, that sounds like an error of time that he might have been able to thrive in. With that, I thank you guys for joining me on another tremendously great episode of the GSMC Weird News Podcast. This has been your favorite host, Ryan Holloway, presented on and by the GSMC Podcast Network. You enjoy your Monday. I will be talking to you soon. Live long, prosper, and watch for potholes. 